Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to our Sunday morning worship service. And this morning our opening hymn will be Silent Night, Holy Night. And I ask that you remain standing for the prayer of invocation by all, followed by all praying the Lord's Prayer. Please rise as you are able. Let us pray. Father, Mother, God, infinite spirit, as we assemble here today to worship in truth and love, with joy in our hearts, sending forth to all creation that healing energy that helps us all resonate at the same vibration. And as we embrace the season of Advent, let us hold thoughts of joy, of the things that we can do to create that state of awareness within us that we may be able to demonstrate as did Jesus the Christ by his life and teachings, how to walk the path, to live in harmony with natural law, that we may truly be at peace within and without, with the realization that just because we have not found that place of peace within our own being, we do not have the right to take away the peace of another. May we demonstrate love, generosity, and all the other gifts of spirit during this holiday season as we pray the prayer that the master teacher taught the original disciples our father which art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And leave us not in temptation, but deliver us from error. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you, and please be seated. It is now the time that we will declare our principles as accepted by the United Metaphysical Churches. They are the cornerstone of our belief system, and when we embody these teachings, we are living in harmony with natural law. We believe in God as infinite intelligence. We believe that the phenomena of nature, both physical and spiritual, are the expression of infinite intelligence. We affirm that a correct understanding of such expression and living in accordance therewith constitute true religion. We believe in personal responsibility and that we create our own happiness or unhappiness as we live in harmony or discord with natural, physical, and spiritual laws. We affirm that the existence and the personal identity of the individual continues after leaving the physical world. We affirm that communication with spirit is a natural experience and is demonstrated through mediumship. We affirm that examples of prophecy and healing found in the Bible and other sacred texts are divine attributes found in all people. We believe that the highest morality is contained in the golden rule, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. We affirm that the doorway to reformation is always open to any soul here or hereafter. Our special music this morning that precedes our meditation is titled, What Child Is This? What child is this who lay to rest on Mary's lap is sleeping, whom angels greet with anthem sweet, while shepherds watch our
Watching a herd of sheep, which symbolizes pure thoughts. And as you are sitting, contemplating, attuning yourself to the higher realms of life, within your mind's eye appears a bright light, shining so brightly that you feel the energy of it radiating around, out around you. As you feel that energy, it's filled with love, with healing, with knowing. It makes you feel calm, peaceful, filled with joy. And you become aware of a presence that is guiding you not to fame and fortune, not to the riches of the world, but to open your own consciousness to allow from within that spark of divine truth to spring forth, to give meaning and to allow you to see the path that you have chosen illuminated. There are no pitfalls, no stumbling blocks, just an open way that we may see and continue to nurture these thoughts and these feelings. And as you begin to embody more of that energy, Allow yourself to feel the transformation within, to have that glimpse of the truth of who you are, to know and to have a greater desire to learn more about yourself. How to nurture your spirit and your soul and to walk in that energy of at one moment, knowing that all is well, and knowing the truth of your own being, that we may nurture 
that Christ child that is within each of us, that we may grow in the teachings with the ability to live and teach as did Jesus himself. All of that greatness is within each of us if we allow. As you hold that truth in your mind for just a brief moment, allow yourself to say, this is my truth. I am the master of my vessel. I was given the same free will to choose that which aligns with me not that which someone else desires me to be. Be at peace, feel loved, and know that the God within you is always there, and so it is. After the lights have come up, Feel free to open your eyes. Our scripture today is Malachi chapter 3 verse 1 and the title of our lecture is Advent, the Bible and Consciousness. Behold, I will send my messenger and he shall prepare the way before me and he for whom you are waiting shall suddenly come to the temple of the Lord, even the messenger of the covenant in whom you delight. May Spirit bless the reading of the scripture. Before every great achievement is a period of preparation, a season of advent. The messenger of whom the prophet Malachi spoke is John the Baptist which symbolizes the innate principle in each of us that seeks to do right. It is crude. It comes out of the wilderness crying for the right way, for the truth. This rugged reformer is a child of nature whose soul, soul consciousness draws its nourishment from nature's storehouse, opening the door for the advent of spirit in humanity. When the quickening of spirit takes place in one's consciousness to the extent that the Christ within is revealed, felt, and known, one depends upon the inspiration of spirit rather than the reasoning of the intellectual self. This awakening season of Advent allows our mind to be renewed, our hearts to find grace, our soul to know peace, our eyes to see the light, and our ears to hear the glory of Jesus Christ in our midst. The Bible provides guidance for individuals at all levels of consciousness through which the human soul must transcend on our way back to God in consciousness. Advent is derived from the Latin word adventus, which means a coming or an arrival. In ancient days, the advent of spring was the time for festivals. However, the dictionary also gives us three other definitions for advent, with the first being the season of devotion, which includes the four Sundays immediately prior to Christmas. The second definition is the coming of Christ into the world. The third definition references the second advent, the coming of Christ at the last judgment to judge the living and the dead. Beginning with the exodus of Adam and Eve out of the Garden of Eden, which denotes the beginning of humanity's individual journey in consciousness, all of mankind has experienced a time of preparation, a season of advent. The human mind does not understand that the cosmos is not chaotic, 
The word actually means order. We must learn that God created good orderly direction, not chaos, before we can recognize the coming of Christ's mind into our world, our reality, or our individual consciousness. The Old Testament ends with the prophecy of Malachi. The event of which he speaks is the birth of Jesus, who was born in Bethlehem to the most renowned parents in the entire world. Since that time, the Christian world has celebrated Advent as a season of devotion prior to Christmas, emphasizing repentance mingled with hope, preparing for the second Advent, the return of Christ for the last judgment, followed by the rapture, where the 144,000 souls ascend to heaven. If we look at the population of the world today, then combine that with all of those that have preceded us on the planet, in truth, one has to wonder, what are the odds of being one of 144,000? That causes you reason to ponder. Things like this make me grateful to be a metaphysician, to have insight into the signs and symbols contained in the scriptures. I was blessed to study with some of the greatest teachers who use their abilities to teach others how to see beyond the limitations of the physical eyes. These master teachers express joy at the opportunity to provide a forum for higher learning, answering questions from states of consciousness totally void of human ego. On numerous occasions, Spirit has stated that the second coming of Christ is in individual consciousness and occurs in one individual at a time. And this makes total sense when we come to the realization that we were not all born at the same time we didn't start this walk in life at the same time. And then you throw in reincarnation. When people talk of taking up a spiritual path, they are only describing a point at which the spiritual path they have always been on becomes a conscious choice. This is a very significant point on our journey, but certainly it is not the starting point. We are consciously waking up to something that has been going on for billions of years. In general, the overall metaphysical pattern in the Bible is, first, the Old Testament contains symbols with historical narrative, allegories in the form of historical stories and other litera literary forms some of which contain metaphysical symbolism, but most do not. Second, the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, are highly symbolic biographies of Jesus Christ, who is the living embodiment of spiritual awareness in mankind, made possible by the truth of the Christ within. Third, Acts and Ephesians contain history and commentaries on Christmas Christian church history with metaphysical symbolism in some portions. Fourth, Revelations contains symbolic visions, fantasies, and prophecies. This book contains the deepest and most complex symbolism of all the books in the Bible. It describes the continued unfoldment of a soul after an individual has entered into the metaphysical truth of the teachings of Jesus the Christ and accepts these truths as a guide for living one's life. The most important fact to keep in mind when dealing with any portion of the Bible is that it is always talking about a single individual soul, which is any human being who has committed his or her life to the living of it according to the truth that we find revealed by the life and teachings of Jesus. We are in the greatest Advent season the planet has ever known, 
which brings us to Revelations, which contains the deepest and most complex symbolism of all the books of the Bible. It goes into a greater detail about the continued unfoldment of a soul after the individual has come to accept the deeper esoteric teachings of Jesus the Christ as a guide for living our own lives. Malachi 3.1 states, Behold, I will send my messenger, and he shall prepare the way before me. And he for whom you are waiting shall suddenly come to the temple of the Lord, even the messenger of the covenant in whom you delight. The temple of the Lord is the human body, the physical abode of one spirit for the period of time we exist as human here on earth. The messenger of the covenant is the Christ consciousness that exists in each of us at various stages of evolution. This is what Jesus referenced in Luke 9 verse 57 when he said, Foxes have holes and birds of the air a shelter, but the Son of Man has no permanent place to lay his head. We are learning, growing, expanding units of consciousness, and as such, any state or place of consciousness that we find ourselves can be the right place for that period of time and the choices that we have made. But no place should be permanent until we awaken to and embrace the Christ consciousness that exists within us. By virtue of our presence here on earth, we have demonstrated our commitment to a rigorous spiritual training. The present is both the means to and the end of our awakening, because it will be in the very present that we awaken to the truth of all that is in being and our connection to it. Perhaps. Again, we're in the greatest season of Advent that the planet has ever known, which brings Revelation to the forefront, containing the deepest, most complex symbols of all the books of the Bible. It describes the continued unfoldment of a soul after the individual has accepted these deeper teachings and is living a life to try to be the embodiment of these teachings becoming lights for those around us that have not yet awakened to these truths that we now know as our truth. Metaphysical understanding begins with the realization that out of man, symbolized by Jesus, shall grow, stem forth, a consciousness that shall have total realization of God in all things. Any manifestation which appears as evil is only out of harmony with God's progressive laws of the universe and is temporal. It cannot be permanent because it is not based upon truth. The human mind is a little chaotic at times, trying to understand that the cosmos is not chaotic. The chaos is a state that we have created here on earth. As the orthodox world awaits the physical return of Jesus, metaphysicians are in a time of realization and preparation for the messenger of the Lord, the Christ consciousness, to manifest in the individual consciousness of every human being on the planet. The scripture tells us that the final overcoming takes place in a place called the skull. The skull is the physical abode of the brain, the organ through which one's mind and or consciousness functions, both spiritual and mental. This is the place where the true alchemist does his or her greatest work, the transformation of one's own soul. This is where our hearts find grace. Our soul knows peace. 
our minds become renewed, our eyes see the light, and our ears hear the glory of Jesus Christ in our midst. Each day is a season of Advent for every tomorrow. Yesterday is a memory. Tomorrow is a mystery. That is why today, the present, truly is a gift from God. We should use it to reflect on our own soul's growth, applying our understanding of the natural, physical, and spiritual laws at work in the universe to our own individual lives, with the understanding that the prophecy of Malachi continues to be fulfilled each time an individual becomes Christed in consciousness. As we celebrate the holidays, let us go within, focusing on, on our own spiritual journey, affirming, Lord, make my heart thy garden of joy and happiness, thy temple of peace. May the radiant light of spirit illuminate the pathway of my life, uniting my soul and mind into one thought of love. May the perception of such enlightenment guide me in the fulfillment of my thoughts and desires. May the fragrance of thy presence be ever manifested in my life. It is our responsibility to align our thoughts and actions with our prayer to be able to quote Rick Schumacher, the author of The Hope of Glory, as our individual truth. And I quote, Christ is a light of my mind. Illumined are my thoughts. Christ is the love of my heart. Compassionate are my words. Christ is the strength of my hands. Helpful are my deeds. Christ is the power of my legs. Effortly I walk his path. Christ is the understanding of my eyes. Pure is my vision. Christ in me my all, Christ and all I see. Namaste.